Hey everyone, David Aragona and Craig Mulkowski here taking a look at the feature race at Belmont Park on Saturday. Race 7 is the Grade 3 soaring softly, going at 7 furlongs on the turf for 3-year-old fillies. And we've just got a field of 6 signed on for this race, Craig, but it's not the kind of small field that isn't fun to handicap. There's a case to be made for every single runner in this race, and there is a prohibitive favorite on the morning line, the number 2, Love Appeals, and she's definitely the horse to beat, but I think this might be a more competitive race than it looks at first glance. I agree. There's a couple horses in here that are interesting without a whole lot of running lines. And we also have, we're, from, we're back at Belmont. We haven't seen these seven furlong extended sprints for a while. I always find them a little more interesting. Yeah, distance is definitely a key factor in this race because most of these horses have either gone shorter or gone longer in their prior starts. So they'll either be stretching out or cutting back in distance. And I think that's definitely uh, one of the factors that we have to discuss as we go through this field. Before we get to the contenders, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And this is one, Craig, where... I'll be interested to see how it plays out. I'm not sure if the pace projector is really giving us too many clues as to what the tactics are going to be because it feels like very much a rider's race. A lot of these fillies just have similar running styles. Nobody's really a confirmed front runner. And the number three, American Apple, who's shown on the front end, her connections have sort of changed around her running style recently to come from off the pace. So I think it's going to be up to the jockeys who gets sent to the lead. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting one for sure. Every horse in the field is listed as either a tracker or mid-pack, so it's not like there's a lot of natural speed. So I'd agree. I I'd be leaning towards maybe some jockeys who have shown a little more aggression early on. Yeah, if I had to venture a guess, I might actually say that the number four, Queen Picasso, is the likeliest early leader, even though she's shown last on the pace projector. But uh, it's hard to be certain about that because it's definitely one where the jockeys are going to have to play the break or perhaps formulate some plans ahead of time. Let's go through this field in post position order, and we'll begin with the number one, Lady Beth. Let's take a look at her debut race at Gulfstream Park back on February 5th. And this was the race that was scheduled for turf, rained off the turf on the to the Tapita surface. And she ran very well this day, Craig. Uh, bet down to three to one as a first time starter for the Chad Brown stable. She traveled in the bridle throughout, sat a good trip stalking the pace. And once Jose Ortiz shook the reins at her, she easily ran away from her competition on this day. She's coming back off a layoff here. Uh, I will note that she and a couple and one other horse in this race had been entered to run in a stakes race at Aqueduct back in April that got rained off the turf. So she's been ready to run for a little while. While. They just had to wait for the race to come up. Uh, so that explains the layoff. But she will have to switch to turf for the first time. Yeah, and she's been working pretty regularly. As, so uh, it's not like she hasn't been ready to go for a while. Uh, I really liked what I saw in that race. In the replay, we just kind of see the stretch. What most impressed me when you watch that race, if you go back and see the replay, is she just kind of cruised by the leader without even being asked. It looked like she had a lot more in the tank than me. So I'm not going to take that 91 speed figure all that strongly as a big indicator of her ability here. Yeah, I was impressed by that race as well. She was uh, uh, going away easily, as you said. I do wonder a little bit about the turn back to seven furlongs. You know, they had intended to run her longer in her next start uh, at Aqueduct, but this seven furlong race is the stakes that came up. So we'll see if she can handle the cut back in distance. The number two is Love Appeals. Let's take a look at her last race when she did win sprinting at Aqueduct in an allowance race late April. This was going six furlongs, so she'll have to stretch out an extra furlong here. Also in the race is Senior Prank, who we'll talk about a little bit later. But Craig, Love Appeals, she was a visually impressive winner this day. Sad a good trip, but once Manny Franco asked her to run, she put this field away pretty impressively. Uh, when a horse wins by over four lengths going six furlongs on the turf, you typically have to take notice and and the speed figure says this was a very strong effort. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. She was visually impressive. She was also numerically impressive. And she handled the one turn no problem. She's won at longer around two turns at Gulfstream going seven and a half. So I've got no knocks on this filly. I just wonder. She's going to be heavily bet. She's going to be the favorite. And I think maybe the competition's a little bit stronger than what that morning line would lead you to believe. 
yeah, I think her form is exposed now, and that's why she's going to be such a short price. She definitely has talent. I suppose one question people might ask about her is that her two victories have come when she was racing on Lasix, and the one loss in her second start, that stakes race, was when she came off Lasix at Gulfstream. Uh, I did look up some stats for Christophe Clement to see if that's generally a concern for his horses, and we'll take a look at this dear at Formulator fact, and the answer is a resounding no. Over the past five years, with horses that won their last starts, and are switching off Lasix in a turf stakes. Kristoff actually has great numbers when he had 27% with a $2.71 ROI. This is a, a negative stat for a lot of trainers, Craig, but Kristoff Clement generally gets these horses to run with or without Lasix. Yeah, I was aware of those same stats. I remember the list you published, so I don't think it's a big concern. I think there were some other issues going on in that race that maybe she just didn't run her best. The number three is American Apple. And let's take a look at her last victory all the way back in October of her two-year-old season when she won the grade three matron stakes at Aqueduct. And this was also her lone prior trip to the New York circuit. And she won this race pretty impressively, Craig. And I remember we had talked about it at the time that we were sort of surprised at how fast this matron speed figure had come up. But it's really held up over time. There were some good horses in this race. The third place finisher, Dance Macabre, has come gone on to do some nice things, including last time out when she actually beat American Apple in that Mamzell Stakes at Churchill Downs. American Apple's now third off the layoff during her three-year-old season. I think the big question for her is the seven for long distance. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could look at her PPs and see her two wins have come at six and six and a half. All her other, most of her other races were all at shorter where she didn't fare as well. She did try two turns at Ellis once uh, and kind of packed it in. But it seems to me like distance is maybe this a little better. Maybe it's too long, but it seems to me like five and a half is probably too short. Yeah, she struck me as maybe one that was better going the shorter distances, but maybe that's just those are just the races that came up in her last two starts. Uh, she definitely did run well over the six in the matron last year, so certainly one to consider in this competitive race. The number four is Queen Picasso. Let's take a look at her debut victory at Gulfstream Park from early March. This was a mile and a 16th race on the turf. Seemed like a pretty strong affair just based on uh, the way this race handicapped on the way in. And the fact that this Christophe Clement trainee went off at seven to one really speaks to how competitive the race was. But, but she was ready to go on debut. Got a good trip uh, traveling strongly in the bridle, chasing that somewhat moderate pace. But she finished off pretty well. Craig and she's one of those like Lady Beth that was entered in that stakes the memories of silver and aqueduct got rained off the turf she instead waited for this spot I feel like though she's one that might be benefited from having waited for this race because there's plenty of damn side pedigree to suggest that shorter may actually be better for her yeah, I can see that. I was a little concerned about her speed figure first time out, more so than I was Lady Beth. But when I perused the Timeform US chart, it's been a pretty strong race. All the horses that have come out of it, there have been a few winners. There's been several second place finishes and all have improved their speed figure at least a couple points, some as high as 10 or 12 points. So maybe that race is a little underrated, certainly a contender. Yeah, I, I felt like that race might be a little underrated. The runner-up, I believe, came back to run a 105 time form US speed figure, winning her next start, I, I think, on synthetic. And as you said, others have come back out of that race to improve. And just to expand upon the pedigree, uh, she's a half-sister to a horse that won the Group 1 Brie de la Forêt in France. Uh, that's going seven furlongs. Uh, the Dam, she's a half to a horse uh, that was a Group 1 winner going seven furlongs as a two-year-old. So definitely pedigree to get this distance. The number five is Quarrel. Let's take a look at her last race, which came in the end of 2022, back in November at Aqueduct. And she has to work for this victory. It gets a little bit close in the late stages here. Um, looks like she's not really wanting to run away from her competition, but this was her first time on the turf and she certainly handled the surface, Craig. And if you look at her debut race, when she ran a nice speed figure going six furlongs on the dirt, maybe you'll say to yourself that shorter on the turf could actually be better for her. 
Yeah, I have no problem with that. She's coming off a pretty long layoff, and normally I I really want to bet these horses. I'm a little shaky on the trainer, but she ran that 101 speed figure, which was pretty good. When I say shaky on the trainer, I'm talking about off the layoff, not not the trainer in general. But that 101's good, particularly coming as a two-year-old. If she had the expected maturity, uh, she could easily be up there with the stronger uh, betting choices in this race. Yeah, I think she stacks up well in overall ability, and we'll see if she's ready off the layoff, but the price should definitely be there. The number six is Senior Prank, and we already watched her replay when she finished behind Love Appeals. Uh, we'll take a look at her past performances in Time Form US, and she earned a nice speed figure for that race, Greg, even though she was no match for Love Appeals on that occasion. Uh, broke a little bit uh, outwardly, uh, was slow into stride that day, was picking up pieces at the end. Ran like one that might want a little more ground than the six furlongs. She gets it here, but she's just the kind of horse that I would want a prize on if I was going to back in a race like this. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the other Chad Brown. We've certainly seen them win before. It was just hard for me watching that replay to to see any kind of trouble, enough trouble that would make me think she could reverse the tables on Love Appeals, let alone beat some of the others in here as well. Well, let's throw up our picks for this soaring softly stakes and not a big surprise to me, Craig, that we've got all six numbers on the screen here at our picks. It's just that competitive kind of race. So uh, I'm not surprised that we have a minor disagreement. Um, I think we both respect Love Appeals, the favorite, but there are other fillies with upside to go to and you chose one of them in Lady Beth. Yeah, this is the kind of, if I was playing horizontals, I would probably spread. I would use your pick as well, Queen Queen Picasso. A lot of the same things that I like in Lady Beth. Uh, she's just a filly who I think is faster than what we saw on debut. Uh, I like that she showed tactical speed in that race. She was basically right up on the leader the whole way around. So you mentioned Queen Picasso could be the one on the lead. I think Lady Beth could be there or sitting in the pocket. And I, I expect a good trip from Flavia and Prada and a much improved speed figure. Yeah, I just wanted to do some price shopping in this race. I thought that Queen Picasso might be the right kind of value in here, and I like the turn back for her. I also think the number five quarrel, while a less likely winner, could get really ignored on the tote board, and I think she's got ability and could find the seven furlongs to her liking if she's ready off the layoff. So definitely an interesting six-horse soaring softly stakes on Saturday at Belmont Park. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.